Hey there, and welcome to the project portion of the library's week, where we are going to use what we've um, learned so far this week about libraries and specifically P5.js to come up with our own, our own project. Um, so I'm really excited about this project, actually. When I first started um, thinking about this course, um, P5 was one of the first things that I thought of. Um, I actually almost taught the entire course in P5, actually. Um, but I, I really love it for a lot of reasons that I talked about in previous videos, so I'm not going to ramble too much. Uh, well, I'm going to try not to anyway. Um, but I, I'm really excited. So this video is meant to sort of just introduce you to the project and maybe walk through how I would approach it. Um, so first off, you know, make sure that you've gone through um, at least the library's um, tutorial and this will walk you through some of the concepts and specifically P5 and and how to get that working and stuff. Um, and then, I don't know, sort of optionally, I would read through this. Um, I think you can read through this as you need more information. So um, if you are, you know, building your project and you want to know how to get user input, then you can come here and get more information and, and then read through all of this. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's how I would approach the content anyway. Um, but, you know, presumably you've already done that anyway. So here you are at the project um, portion. And now this week is a little different than previous weeks. <laughs> I think I say that every week. Um, but by that I mean I don't have a specific list of, like, things for you to do. I kind of want you to spend time on whatever you think is best for you to spend time on. Um, by that I mean... I honestly believe that P5 is the best way to learn JavaScript, maybe to learn coding in general. Um, so if, you know, in the previous weeks you were a little, you know, if, if you got a little frustrated with if statements, then spend some time on if statements and add some if statements to your code and get that working and, until you, um, you know, you, you can practice that way. Um, or if, I don't know, arrays were something that you... Um, banged your head against for a while, then, you know, maybe take this time to use arrays in P5, which is kind of a fun environment that lets you get practice in a more, like, interactive way. So I'm not telling you specifically to use any particular concept. Um, what I am asking you to do is choose from this list. So here's a bunch of different things you could do. Um, I'm saying choose five of them and, you know, whatever you think is best. Um, for for you. Um, you know, I encourage you to do that. So you can read through these to get an idea of the kinds of things that you can do, but really it's pretty much anything that we've done in the, in the class so far. Um, so that's kind of my take on the project, or that's kind of what I encourage you to, to get out of it. And so that being said, how I would approach the project is, you know, similar to how you've approached every other project, hopefully. Um, I would start by looking at the, um, the project file. So go to week 7 p5.js and here you'll have mainly two files, the index file and the sketch.js file. Uh, the name's a little different just because p5 calls their stuff sketches so it's generally called sketch.js but it doesn't matter you could have called this script.js if you wanted to um, and then open that up in your in your uh, editor here it is open in atom um, right now the index file pretty much the only thing it does is load the p5 library and then load the uh, sketch.js file and you know, all of that fits together in the exact same way that I talked about in the previous, uh, in the content videos this week. Um, so then next I would check out the sketch digest um, file, which right now contains two functions, setup and draw, and they call the functions create canvas and background. And again, if you read through this week's content, hopefully that's not too shocking to you. Um, then next I would open up that in your browser. So I'm going to double click that and here we go. And now we have our kind of old reliable setup of our browser on the right and our code on the left. And now I'm kind of free to play around. Um, so again, this is kind of how I would approach it. I would just have your code up and your browser up. You know, I would also probably have your JavaScript console up. So I'm going to pop that open. 
um, more tools, developer tools, and just open up my my console. I've I think I've broken my uh, my uh, the sizing here, but whatever. Um, let me put it on the bottom. Um, so any errors that I get are going to show up down here. Um, okay. So then next, what I would do is maybe take a step back. Maybe don't even think about the computer for a second and think like what kind of sketch do you want to create and this is where there's a ton of room for creativity um, if you want to make a like a drawing you can if you want to make like an animation you absolutely can if you want to make something kind of trippier you can if you want to get into like generative art absolutely can um, I know all of that was probably a little like overwhelming so if you are you know not familiar with some of those things totally fine um, I would recommend checking out the P5.js examples on, on my little web page. So I'm going to open up that in a new tab. And here are a, a huge list of projects that I've put together previously. So I would maybe peruse these as just inspiration for the kinds of things you can do. Um, and they're also broken down into kind of concepts. So uh, like I said kind of earlier, uh, one of the things I like about this project is if you are, you know, if you want more help on a particular concept, P5 is, is the way to do that. So if you want more help, like calling functions, here you go. Here's a bunch of examples that show you how to, how to call different functions. If you want more help, like creating variables, then check out one of these examples and maybe, you know, build your own kind of take on it. Um, you know. Uh, the same thing is true for other concepts like if statements here like I said if you um, if you kind of got frustrated with if statements and you want some more practice with it then here's a really good opportunity to to spend that time uh, practicing whatever concepts that you that you think that you could use more practice with um, anyway kind of peruse this page to get inspiration for the kinds of things you can do or you know come up with your own and you know that's all that's all good too um i like to have like a piece of paper and a pencil next to me or a pen and kind of draw things out by hand a lot uh, that that can be helpful um or you can just kind of sketch and that's that's kind of why p5 calls it sketch.js because it encourages you to just kind of play so maybe one thing i would do is maybe get something working like circle I'm going to call the circle function and pass it some parameters, maybe 200, 200, and give it a size of 100, and just see where that takes me. So I'm going to save that and hit refresh, and there you go. There's my circle. Um, if you don't know what functions you can call, then there are a few places you can look. One is you know in these tutorials and the examples that I've posted on my web page, but um, even better, you can maybe go to p5js.org slash reference and here is a big long list of all of the different things you can do so what did i call i called circle um, you can get more information so if you, instead of a circle you want a square or a triangle or a line you know these are all available to you since we're using the p5 library um, so use those to you know to work towards whatever sketch you have in your brain um, I'd also encourage you to explore some of the other, uh, I don't want really to use the word more advanced concepts, but I don't know, the concepts that use other kind of techniques that maybe we haven't covered so far in class. So specifically what I'm talking about are things like um, getting user input. We haven't really talked about that specifically because P5 has its own set of variables and functions that you can use. So maybe you do something when the mouse is pressed or uh, something like that. Um, animation is another example, so maybe you kind of get into the world of creating your own animations, and, and that could be a lot of fun. Um, so just to maybe demonstrate that, what I might say is I'm going to give myself a project here, and I'm just going to code it up and um, see, see how that goes, honestly. I don't know how it's going to go. Um, so let's say I have a goal of what do I want to do. Maybe I want to have intro to web dev the name of our course bouncing back and forth uh, on the screen uh, maybe i'll start with just up and down so the way i would do that is first of all i would go to these tutorials and i would look at the animation tutorial and maybe just read through this 
and get an idea of how animation works and and then apply the concepts there so like here's a lot of what i'm going to need and um i can i can kind of take inspiration from from this code so i think what i'm going to do is yeah i'm just going to try it going to try it so i'm going to create a couple variables maybe i'll say like let message equals intro to web dev and and maybe i'll just display that honestly so i'm gonna uh you know i happen to know the function to call but maybe just a model like if i didn't know how to draw text or draw a string in in p5 i could read through the p5 reference until i find like here's like text output you know maybe that's promising um here's how i change colors you know maybe i'll use that in a second um but eventually I'm going to find, hopefully, somewhere in here is string functions. Um, and that'll, that'll give me more information about strings. Actually, that's not even what I'm looking for. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot here. So um, actually here is maybe what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so down here, here's typography uh, functions and this I can click through these and figure out more information and, and read through each one um, you know maybe I'll just click text size and here's how to set the size of the text and then here this example code also calls the text function and it looks like this is how it's displaying text and so maybe I go back to the reference and I go specifically to that function text the text function and indeed here it is um, looks like it's it's the function that draws text to the screen. Um, and you can read through it, get a ton more information, and you know, figure out which, um, which parameters it takes and all that good stuff. And you can also, honestly, just, um, just play around. So I'm going to say text, and I'm going to say message. And maybe I'll just say that, just to model. Again, this is kind of artificial, and I don't love it, but I'm just going to see what happens if I don't give it the parameters that it wants. I honestly don't know what will happen. Um, so I'm going to refresh. And yeah, okay, here's an example of an error message that I might get. So I've called the text function and I've given it the message uh, variable as a parameter and I'm getting this error message. P5 says text was expecting at least three arguments, but it received only one. Okay, uh, and then it actually gives you a handy link to the text uh, reference. And you know, here, here is actually what it's complaining about. It's saying, hey, I wanted at least three. I need an X and a Y. So you told me what text to draw, but you didn't tell me where to draw it is what that's complaining about. So I'll give it an X and Y and I'll refresh. And there's my beautiful intro to web dev. Maybe I'll increase the size while I'm here. I actually don't remember what parameter that takes. We'll find out. Okay, it's not bad. Good enough, I think. And you know, you can start to get into like, hey, this is 200, 200, which is the center, but it's kind of to the right of the center. So maybe I actually want this to be like 175. And you get into the world of fiddling with uh, with parameters, which I honestly can spend all day on, but um, I'm gonna try to resist that urge. So whatever, good enough, I think, uh, for my purposes. And next, um, my actual goal is to get this bouncing around the screen. So maybe I'll have, I don't know, like a let y or maybe text y um, variable and I'll set it to, what did I set it to at first? Where am I drawing it currently? X, Y, I'm currently setting it to 200. So maybe I'll um, use a variable instead. And again, this is like using the concepts that we had learned in previous weeks. So I'm creating a variable storing a value in it and then passing that variable in as a parameter to a function and you know some of those keywords hopefully sound a little familiar um, but that's what i mean when i say that p5 is a good uh, good way to get more practice because here i am kind of playing with something that i can just see which for me is a lot more interesting than you know kind of the javascript kind of it gets kind of theoretical honestly um, and I'm just not super excited by like p tags. <laughs> anyway, um, so now I have that kind of working. And again, my goal is to get this animated and I could read through this and, and see how this is working and um, you know, try something similar. I happen to have already read this 
in fact, I, you know, I wrote it. So, so I kind of know what I'm going for. Um, but you know, if you don't read through these tutorials to get a better sense of, of, of what to do next, but I'm going to maybe have like a text Y speed or maybe I'll just call it Y speed. Um, I'll set it equal to one for now. And maybe here at the end of my draw function, I'll say uh, text Y plus equals Y speed. And you know, if you haven't read this tutorial yet, then you're going to be like, how did you know to do that? And the answer is I would have read through this tutorial. So like, if you're like, I wouldn't know how to do that, that's okay. Because if you haven't read this tutorial yet on animation, then you know, you wouldn't have. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Like use those tutorials to get more information about uh, how it all fits together. So I'm going to refresh. And now, now I have an animation. Now I have it sort of going off the, the bottom of the screen and that's, all good but it's not the most exciting animation in the world and uh you know you probably wanted to do a little bit more than that or you know i'll say that i wanted to do a little more than that and so this gets at kind of the next idea that i would kind of encourage you to think about and that is sort of incremental development and we've talked about this before but by that i mean we have something working and we don't have any errors and it's you know it's it's doing something that we we kind of understand um, and now i want to add one more thing to it i'm not going to try to code up the entire thing all in one go but um i want to get the next step working test that step out and then make sure that that it works and doesn't have errors and and kind of go from there um so you know the next thing i want to do is get it maybe bouncing off the bottom and again like i'm kind of just stealing all of this from from the existing tutorials but you know maybe i'll point out that this is you know it's a good way to practice the fundamentals like i like i've kept saying um, so uh, this is a good use of an if statement and so if in the previous weeks you hated if statements then maybe now is the time to go back and and finally defeat them <laughs> i mean it's a, a too 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 negative a way to say that but i mean like just practice them in a in an environment where you are working towards you know something like a, a goal that you have uh in your sketch um anyway so i'm going to keep keep trucking i think um so i'm going to have an if statement that says something like um so if text y is greater than height so if it goes off of the bottom then what i'll do is reverse the the speed so i'll say y speed times equals negative one again stealing all of this pretty much directly from from the tutorial um, so let's refresh this and see what happens and there's our bouncing so that's like one step closer to to uh you know my end goal but i didn't try to code up the entire thing i just got the one thing working um, so I don't know how much more I'm going to do of this, but maybe I'll just get a couple other things working just to show you. So let's say that I wanted it to bounce off of the top as well. So I might have an or operator in here and I'm going to kind of purposely make a mistake here just to demonstrate it. I know it's a little bit artificial, but I kind of want to show um, that that process of, of having a bug and, and debugging it. So I'm going to write my if statement and say uh, less than zero. So I'm going to say if text y is greater than height or less than zero. And this is a common way that people approach if statements, especially if they are new to either if statements or like the idea of combining multiple conditions using an or operator. So it's it's honestly code that you will you'll probably end up writing um, or you know very similar to it. So I'm going to refresh this and and see what happens. And I get an error message. And it's uncalled syntax error, uh, unexpected token, less than sign. And um, it, this might be behind my dumb face right now, but it says sketch.js in the, in the lower right corner. So if I, you know, if I didn't know what this meant, uh, first off, you know, you can kind of squint at the line. It, it kind of pointed out line 16. So you know that it's the line of code that I just wrote. So I could squint at this and see if I notice anything obvious. If I if I didn't notice anything obvious, maybe I would copy the error message and paste that into a search engine. And this will give you a bunch of resources. And honestly, it's like posts from other people who have seen this before. And it's a good way to sort of learn from other people, 
hitting the same kind of thing. Uh, but honestly, what I'll say is if you get an error like this and you have stared at it a little bit and you've entered it into a, a search engine and you've you've read through a couple posts and you still don't have, you know, you're still not sure what to do. And if it's been five minutes, honestly, five minutes, uh, set a timer or something. But if it's been five minutes of you banging your head against an error message, then please, 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 please reach out to me uh, over chat, email, office hours, whatever. Um, probably chat is the fastest way to, to do it. Uh, but I don't want you fighting with syntax errors like this when I, I can probably help get you unblocked pretty quickly. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions in, in this kind of case. Again, I would say give yourself five minutes before you uh, like ask a question. Don't go all day. Don't go all week just fighting one, one problem. Um, get yourself unblocked and, and stick with the fun parts of coding. Um, anyway, so in this case, um, the error is because I, you know, I purposely made this mistake, but I need both sides of my or operator to be a Boolean expression. So I need the full kind of syntax where I'm comparing it in both cases. So let me refresh and my error message goes away and let's see if it bounces off the top. And there we go. Woo. It does indeed bounce off the top. It kind of goes off the top a little bit, you know, it doesn't bounce when the top of the text reaches the top. So I could fiddle around with the, the parameters here. Maybe I change this zero to like a, a 20 or something, but you know, that's stuff that you can do. I, I don't think it's going to be super helpful for me to demonstrate that. Um, so next what I might do is get it bouncing like left and right as well. But I think I'm going to skip that just because it's more of the same, and I don't think it's super useful for you to watch me go through that. It's it's going to be the exact same process of like adding variables, adding if statements, testing one thing at a time, and a lot of that is in the tutorials and examples that I have uh, up on the webpage. So if you want more of that kind of content, then um, you know feel free to check that stuff out. So from here, what I might just do is play with a couple other things that you might play with in your projects. Like I, I kind of arbitrarily chose this, this like bouncing text example. I, I'm not saying that everyone should do a project that has bouncing text. Uh, in fact, I hope that that's not what happens. I hope that everyone has their own kind of take on it and, and that'll be really cool to see. Um, but I could play around with stuff like colors. You know, the boring gray background drives me nuts. I think they actually do that on purpose to like make you change it. <laughs> um, but let's make it like an eye searing bright red. And you know, that's fun. Um, you could also play with things like randomness. So I don't know, maybe I will, um, Maybe I'll set my my y speed to a random number. I don't know. This might be a little bit Mickey Mouse, but let's see. Y speed equals random, and then I'll give it a number between one and five, maybe. So every time I refresh, it'll have a different speed, maybe. You know, sometimes it's slower, sometimes it's faster. Eh. I don't know how I feel, honestly. It's not super interesting to me. <laughs> maybe you make the background a random color instead, or maybe you, um, maybe every time that it bounces, you make the, the background a random color. But anyway, I, I don't want to spend too much time on like specifics of what I would do next in this project, because the idea is that whatever you are working on, whether that's drawing a picture of your dog or making some kind of data visualization or um, honestly, just drawing shapes and stuff like it's kind of up to you what you would do next. But the process is the same where you try something out, um, you read through the tutorials and the examples and you see, see if it works, see if it, see if it sparks joy for you. And if it does, then keep it. If not, then maybe try something else. And of course, when you hit an error, then, you know, please, please, please reach out, um, after about five minutes of, of, of banging your head against it. Um, cool. So I think I'm going to end it there. I think that's, I've demoed kind of the process of how I would approach the code for this project and how I would kind of get unstuck if I was hitting an error and, and all that good stuff. Um, the last thing I'll mention is maybe I'll just call more attention back to these examples. Um, 
I wrote these over the last like few years, and some of them are more more recent than others. Um, so what I'll say is like look for this triangle icon. That means that there's a video for it. So if you like the the video content kind of style of coding, then then check those out, and you'll see a lot of examples of me coding it just on my own, not really with the intention of of teaching a class, um, but through the sort of honest lens of this is what coding looks like and um, making mistakes and debugging and getting frustrated and, and all that stuff. It's you'll see that in these videos for sure. So um, if that's the kind of content that that you think would be helpful, then 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 check those out. Um, anyway, all right, that's enough of me rambling and, and shamelessly self-promoting my own website. So I think I'm going to leave it there, but I will say that again, I'm, I'm super excited about this week because there's so much room for creativity and it's a good sort of environment to kind of test or, or, or solidify everything that we've, we've seen so far. So I am, I'm, I'm super pumped to see what, what y'all are going to come up with. Um, yeah. So, you know, as always, of course, uh, please let me know if you have questions or, or just want to chat through something or if you just want to show me what you have so far and, and talk about what you want to do next I am I'm here for all of the above um, but for now I'll say thanks for watching uh, have a lot of fun with this one and I'll see you in the next one